Good morning, fellow privateers. Good afternoon. Good evening, whatever time zone you guys are in. Hope everyone had a nice weekend. I was in Detroit for hockey and uh, got back in the saddle this morning and uh, basically spent the last couple hours just kind of catching up on some of my charts and the any of the fundamental news and you know kind of what went on last week what we're expecting this week China's back in the saddle as well so any of you China subscribers welcome back hope you had a nice nice week off uh, just going through some of the Bloomberg headlines over the weekend uh, not a whole lot to talk about it was uh, extremely quiet however um, a couple hours ago the there was a headline um, that said the US government shutdown looms as talks break down over the border security between the Republicans and Democrats not sure how big of a deal this is um, but uh, I would say that was pretty much the, the only headline of significance. So we'll have to keep an eye on that this week. Um, and we'll get to the economic calendar and the, uh, the, the central bank meetings and the, um, you know, the event risk that, uh, that we'll be paying attention to this week. So uh, one other thing I read from BAML said the latest central bank's pivot is one, of, is one for the ages. 98% of assets across the globe have had positive re returns thus far in 2019. That's kind of interesting. Um, the Fed pivot, you know, the, the, obviously the Powell pivot that we saw, the ECB has since revised their balance of risks to the downside. So, you know, we are expecting a double sounding ECB coming up in March. And then, of course, last week, the RBA shift did their rate policy to neutral from a hiking bias, which um, caught the market uh, a bit by surprise during the uh, when Lowe was speaking. It was not on the RBA meeting itself, but the day after. Um, you know, a few of these strategy guys, these bank strategy guys, are they're they're saying that you know the bet. Their bet now is that central banks are starting to run out of ammo as with this new dovish pivot. Uh, and, you know, things could get kind of ugly if we, if some of these central banks start implementing QE again, you know, and as they're cutting rates again, if the global economy is slowing, I don't think it's going to have the same positive at, uh, impact on risk assets as it did during the financial crisis so you know that's a little bit more macro and longer term but uh, certainly something to keep an eye on as far as kind of the major markets that that we're following um the euro last week and again on the on the on the this monday preview week ahead outlook you know we we tend to look at the weekly charts just to see how things shaped up the previous week and if we can get a any uh information from those charts and the price action for the week ahead. Anyhow, so the euro was down about 1.1%. Dollar yen was up small, I think about point, uh, I think it was 20 basis points. British pound was down a percent. Aussie and Kiwi were the underperformers. Um, those were both down 2.2% on the week. S&P magically closed pretty much unchanged. We'll get to that chart a little bit later. And then crude oil, uh, was the weakest, uh, down 4.6%. And that was after, you know, a big rally up into that uh, FIBO zone. Um, some of the, some of the uh, technical areas we're looking at, here's a dollar index. So the left chart is the weekly, the right chart is a daily. Put things in perspective for you. Um, you can see we're bumping up against this 96. You can see this old weekly high here. So this 96.70 is a big technical pivot for people. And then we have these fractals up here at 97.70, uh, kind of 97.80, 97.90. Uh, 
So this this area up here looks like if we do get a break of this 96.70, I think we can get another dollar out of that. And obviously that would be negative um, the euro. So the equivalent level in the euro, we'll go to that chart, is, um, uh, what do I have here? It's, it should be 112, uh, it'd be about one, just, just below the close, you can see the weekly bar. This Let me uh, widen this out a little bit. So this was a weekly bar last week. Closed right in the lows, um, just a, just above some key support. So 112.90, um, you know, right in here looks to be, you know, the, the important support area. And then under there, it's 112.70. We had a couple weekly lows there. And then the, the low of this whole move was... All the way down at 112.17. So um, euro still looks like in a, a bit of trouble um, to me. And uh, you can see on the daily on the right chart here, you can see how we did fail up at that 76.8 Fibo above 115. This was the this was the Powell um, this was the Powell day, and then we we went up. You know, the next day got up to 115.10 and failed. And we've had, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So six of the last seven daily bars have been down. And, uh, you know, we're getting close to the low close of 2019. The low daily close is down here at 113.05. Uh, the lowest weekly close of 2019 was last week down here. And we closed at 113.20. Uh, 113.20. So. Keep an eye on that ninety-six seventy dollar index, which we're very close to, and uh, one twelve eighty ninety in the euro. Um, did read a piece from uh, our friend Greg McKenna. He put out his weekly. He's, he was talking about how the Australian dollar um, needs to fall. You know, call it five big figures or so from here. It's the, it's the only thing that really helps that Australian economy is when they. If they can weaken their currency, which would help their uh, help their exports, so you know make their exports look more attractive uh, to the rest of the world. So that you know it's a it's a it's a smaller economy, and uh, exchange rates and you know the likes of New Zealand or Australia are very important um, are very important for kind of protecting themselves uh, during during downdrafts. And again, I keep talking about Australia. Um, we are going to get uh, probably have like a write up in the blog. And then I'll do a <clears throat> I'll do a, a special video um, highlighting our views on the Australian dollar. Um, so look out for that. Um, I'm hoping to get that done this week. I need to talk to my <clears throat> partners about that. Um, why don't we just go right through the weekly charts and the daily charts, see if there's anything that uh, pops out. So here's Australia and dollar. We talked about that one. Uh, we did we did sell off down to 7060 area. Um, you have a, a Fibo here at 70, uh, 70, 70. Again, this is if that if this is the low you're thinking. I think the real low is 60. I know the real low is 6715. Um, however. You know, for the for the chart watchers, I we're just going to go with that this low that we're seeing on Trading View because that's the, the kind of the fib swing that people will be watching. Um, we did have a, a bit of a bounce, but still closed around 70.80, and uh, you know, new low daily close for 2000. Let's see what day was this? Uh, you know, it, it's getting close to this. Uh, you know this area in here, um, so we, we think there's some more downside in in, uh, in Aussie dollar. Euro, we talked about the importance of this 112.80.90 level. British pound, um, you can see there's been some indecision the past few days. If you look at the chart on the right, and this blue is uh, highlights inside days where we make higher lows and lower highs from the previous bar. So we've had kind of two of the last three have been uh, fairly indecisive, smaller ranges. Um, I do, and we'll talk about it, but I, the, the UK has got a, 
they've got a ton of data this week, starting out today with uh, GDP and IP in industrial production. Um, but we have loads of macroeconomic uh, risk in the UK. Um, GDP, industrial production, CPI, retail, and then of course uh, May is going back to uh, Brussels. There'll be meetings, um, or no, there's a Brexit vote. Uh, let me just check my calendar here. I thought I wrote this down somewhere. I mean, this Brexit stuff is getting old, so I'm, I'm having having troubles following it. Um, but anyhow, so on Thursday, the UK Parliament uh, um, is voting on alternatives to Prime Minister May's defeated Brexit legislation. So, um, you know, we'll see what, what comes out. But the bottom line is that with all this macroeconomic data this week in British Pound, I think I'm going to, um, I'll wait till uh, Asia really opens. I'm going to look at buying some straddles. Um, you know, really no clue on the direction, but uh, I think we can get some decent movement. Um, you know, and balls, balls have picked up pretty dramatically in the, uh, the two month, which covers the uh, deadline. Um, I thought I printed that sheet out. The, the vols have picked up considerably, um, for those two months, I think they're like 12 ball or somewhere around there. So again, market leaning, I guess more recently to, um, cable lower, but, um, you know, some of the banks have put out reports saying that this thing could move 20% either way. Um, you know, once the, uh, yeah, as we, you know, once we get some sort of clarification on, on Brexit, that seems like a punchy move, but, um, you know, with the liquidity these days and FX, we see what we've noticed over the past, call it five to seven, either central bank meetings or, uh, key macro economic events, the, uh, the market has outperformed the, what the, the straddle and, you know, the straddle is, um, you know, if you could buy an overnight straddle for 30 pips ahead of a key event and most of these events, it's trading kind of double the straddle. So with the, the historic and the, the one month fall, um, so low on FX, it seems like the options market makers are underpricing some of these, uh, some of these key events. So that, that, you know, that's a strategy that we're starting to, to employ. Good example was last week in dollar CAD. Uh, we had the CAD jobs number. So on Thursday night, we bought an overnight um, dollar CAD straddle. Again, no clue the direction, which way it was going to go. And I believe it was about 40 pips. Um, you can see what it did. Here's the daily bar. If we look on the, uh, the right chart here, this daily bar, the range was 133.29, the high all the way down. It was about a 100-point range um, and then kind of settled, you know, in the top third. Um, but that's the kind of gamma you want. So you get that big move down. I was able to, um, cover my, the dollar cad put that I owned and I more than paid for the option. So it's something that, something to, to watch for the options market definitely seems to be, uh, mispricing these events. Um, so there's a dollar cad anyhow. So the weekly dollar cad was a pretty, you know, pretty bullish. It was strong all week. Uh, that would, was helped by some of the oil. Um, we had, you know, the big move down in oil. Uh, Dollar Swiss is interesting. I was looking at this. Now, why did it save here? Uh, it's kind of annoying. Um, if I go here, take a look at this, uh, like this three-day bar, three days of bars. So we had the big up day, then we had that doji day, and then we had a big down day, which is interesting and we still had a strong week for uh, dollar Swiss, but you know, dollar Swiss is one of those that, that cur the currency kind of gives you some sort of direction. Um, and I, I don't follow it that closely. Uh, but when I see a pattern like this, uh, my kind of temper, some of my bullish dollar, uh, thesis that I've been playing dollar China. So China was out last week. We had a doji day on Friday. Uh, you know, we had a couple inside days. We kind of, we tried to break out and then just settle on change. So that's kind of expected, you know, when, when they're out, um, we'll start seeing some flows come back in, uh, the weekly, it, you know, we had that kind of hammer bottom off of the, uh, 
I think it was a 200 week moving average, which I don't know what I'm drawing here. And uh, and then we you know we did have a positive week, so keep an eye on dollar China. That will give us direction for the rest of the dollars. Uh, dollar yen, we had an inside day Friday, really nothing going on. There was no economic data of the U.S., so it doesn't really matter. Uh, here's your doji week two weeks ago, and then we settled kind of bottom third, and that was more of a risk-off type uh, development, uh, you know, with stocks failing up near that 200-day uh, moving average. Dollar yen, there was, I looked at that earlier, there was not much there. Um, if we look here, we can see in the weekly that's an outside reversal week lower in Aussie yen. Um, yeah, that's starting, that's again a risk, risk off and risk on barometer. Uh, similar, we got close in CAD yen, Euro yen, the weekly, let me move this thing. Uh, outside reversal lower or bearish engulfing if you are a candle trader. Um, and that was in Euro yen. Sterling yen, we, what did we get in sterling yen? My computer's freezing up. Nothing. We had inside week two weeks ago, at, uh, highlighted by the blue bar, and then just kind of a lower high and lower low, lower close. So I also had a doji on Thursday and then a uh, kind of undecided inside bar on Friday. Uh, let's take a look at Kiwi yen, another, out, another bearish engulfing week here on the left chart. This looks pretty shitty. It's back below the 200 day. Uh, let's take a look at what do we have? Um, some of the. Uh, let's take a look here. Let's go look at Euro Norway. So, Nor 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 Norwegian Krone has been the um, best performing currency in kind of G10 um, this year. You can see that with the weekly. You know, here's the end of uh, December, and then we had, you know, Euro weakness, Norwegian kroner strength. Last week, that was reverse, even after they had some good numbers. Um, keep an eye out on CPI, that's that's coming out. Uh, UBS thinks that this market is kind of crowded with long Norway positions. And on the flip side with uh, Sweden, um, this was the weakest currency in the past month, as you can see here with Euro Stocky on the left chart, you know, big move up here all year. Um, that is getting, this Euro stock is getting over, pretty overbought against not just the Euro, but against all, about seven or eight other pairs. Um, and then one other thing that they were talking about was Australian dollar. They, they think some of this weakness is, um, and this dovishness is priced in. Uh, the market's putting out I believe it's a 90% probability of a cut in November. Um, we're still short this. I'm looking at maybe trying to cover some because my option expires on Tuesday. So I'm going to try to buy. If there's a little dip here in Asia, I'll try to buy that. Um, well, before we get to the economic count, let's take a look at some of the other risk markets that we operate in, that being the S&P. And you can see how the S&P 500 did close slightly positive on the week. They kind of ramped it in the last 10 minutes. It's just totally fixed, you know, totally manipulated by central banks and, and the like. Um, uh, so we're, we're still, we, you know, we, we tried fading. We, we sold a little bit up here. We've been talking about trying to sell this 27, 30, 40 level. We are short, um, you know, via some S&P puts looking for a bigger pullback. Uh, the key level, the key pivot on the week, and this is from some of our technical voodoo, um, the key, pe the key pivot on the week in the S&P is 2680. If we get a close under 2680, we're gonna be, uh, become increasingly bearish. And in the meantime, we're, trying to, we're kinda trying to hedge up some of this. So again, if we uh, get a dip in risk in Asia, I'll buy some futures in and and get hedged up with my puts. Um, NASDAQ had a, had a decent week, you know, another new high this year, and then a new high close on the left chart. A little bit of indecision here with this, um, you know, and, and kind of topping out just below the 200 day. Uh, but then if we look at some of these other countries, here's the Nikkei, really ugly, um, ugly week.
week after a doji and an inside week prior to that. Um, you can see it with an inside day, and then we sold off uh, the last two days of the week. Uh, the DAX looks pretty ugly. Um, you know, had a decent bounce like all the rest of the indices. Still looks pretty ugly to me. Uh, we closed near the lows of the week. WTI crude is down 4.5% this week. We did not have an outside week on the left chart, but we did make a new marginal high up against some pretty good resistance. It was a third FIBO of this whole move. Let's get there. Oh, it's snowing out. Great. Uh, you got to love the Midwest winters. You can see where it topped out here. That's a big FIBO. Um, so we're, we are short that. Again, it's very similar, like the short Aussie, short crude oil, short S&Ps. These are all pretty much the same trade. Um, so we, we, you know, we need to be paying close attention and, and, and stay nimble. We did have an inside day in oil. It didn't do really do anything on Friday. Um, we like these inside days because generally when you get a break, if you can see here from this blue bar, once we really started breaking under this low, you got you know, you got some, some selling over the next uh, couple days. Um, it's not the perfect indicator, but generally it's just showing us that the market is very indecisive and the next move above above or below that inside day can uh, can be good for short-term direction. Um, VIX, you know, looks like an inside day on Friday closed near the lows with that equity bounce here's the weekly just been down for six seven weeks straight um, high yield I was reading something about high yield the HYG um, had a massive run up the market is really short this thing going into year end massive run up and uh, but then you know showed us this and you know this is pretty high, highly correlated to the S&Ps so um, we watch this as a as kind of a tell back below the 200 day the right chart so that covers pretty much all the charts um, talk about the some of the key events this week we like I said we've got a, a bunch out of the UK starting with UK GDP and industrial production on Monday Norway CPI is important for sure especially with the uh, positioning and um, <coughs> Then on Wednesday, we have the Ricks Bank. They hiked rates last meeting, and they are expected to stay on hold uh, at minus 0.25%. They're expecting dovish, them to be dovish after the last hike. Um, and as economic data has been faltering of late, uh, I was looking at a chart about that. The same goes with the RBNZ, who is this week. That's on Wednesday. Um, expecting them to be dovish, not doing anything with rates. We have uh, a bunch of Eurozone data. We have EU um, Eurozone industrial production. On Wednesday, we got US CPI, UK CPI, and, thir and then the RBNZ is Wednesday night, my time, Thursday or morning in Asia. Thursday, we have EU GDP. That's important. The whole Eurozone comes out with GDP numbers and US retail. And government shutdown, uh, it'll shut down again at midnight on Friday. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, you know, I haven't seen any other headlines since the, the one I talked about at the beginning of the video. Um, so I guess the, you know, overall things that we're looking at is we're still playing the risk off theme this week. Uh, 2680, really, really important in the S&P. Uh, if we do get a daily close under there, then I expect a further sell off down to 2575 has been a target and, uh, you know, to kind of the 2600 level initially um, you know the two central banks RBNZ and Rick's Bank both important and then that whole host of UK data which um, I'll be looking to buy some one week straddles that will cover all the events and uh, you know keep me engaged in sterling I, I can't trade sterling spot positions it's impossible so I'd rather just have an option on um, without any clear direction and, and take advantage of the, you know, some of these intraday swings. Uh, I expect a pretty, pretty lively British pound and British pound crosses 
uh, cable and sterling crosses this week. Anyhow, you'll hear from us on the uh, on the European Open, and uh, if I see anything, I'll uh, I'll shoot some tweets out here during your session, and I'll be back in a couple hours from when the uh, equities and rest of the markets open. Good luck this week, and we will speak to you soon. All the best. Cheers.